Hello and welcome to the Tea Party Hardy channel. We are glad to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. If you like this video while you're watching it, please feel free to hit the like button and you can subscribe at any time you'd like. San Francisco Chronicle Editorial House Democrats Dubious Vote Against Prejudice. Hmm, dubious, huh? Well, let's see what they have to say. At the House of Representatives, as the House of Representatives demonstrated Thursday, with an awkward vote against bigotry itself, a big tent may contain a party or a circus. Mm, interesting. A resolution against anti-Semitism and a smorgasbord of other prejudices did produce, if nothing else, democratic unanimity, a growing challenge for Speaker Nancy Pelosi's ungainly majority. Boy, they got lots of compliments to throw out today. The vote was the San Francisco Democrats' attempt to paper over a flare-up of religious, racial, political, and generational divides in her caucus. It seems being large and diverse can be a problem for a political party, even if it's a good problem to have. We're going to come back to that paragraph, so if you're interested, stick around. The Democrats' resolution aimed a garbled rebuke at one of their own, Minnesota freshman Ilan Omar, a Somali refugee who became one of the first two Muslim women elected to Congress, represents the party's strength in those respects. Less auspicious is her difficulty criticizing Israel without the aid of anti-Semitic chestnuts. She has characterized her fellow lawmaker's support for the Jewish state as allegiance to a foreign country and all about the Benjamins. That is money, evoking stereotypes of Jews as disloyal and acquisitive. Several more senior Democrats, some of them Jewish, demanded a formal rejection of anti-Semitism. Pelosi and her fellow Democratic leaders, who hoped the resolution would put the matter behind them in favor of more substantive legislation, might have accomplished the opposite by drawing attention to a, watch it, watch it, to a watered-down waste of taxpayer compensation time. Still, McCarthy's Republicans managed to do worse. 24 members of the deservedly diminished caucus, as you can tell, San Francisco Chronicle, deservedly diminished caucus failed to join the vote against bigotry. Now, wait a minute. Is it a vote against bigotry or is it a watered down waste of taxpayer compensated time? It can't be both. Wake up and choose your argument, San Francisco Chronicle. Ugh. Okay, now, as promised, that one paragraph. Where did it go to? Ah, yes. The vote was the San Francisco's Democrats' attempt to paper over a flare-up of religious, radical, political, and generational divides in her caucus. It seems being large and diverse can be a problem for a political party, even if it's a good problem to have. Okay, I'll spend just a few seconds on this here, guys. <clears throat> Hope that doesn't show up. Okay, sorry. Um, diverse. Diversity. Divided. Separated. Um, you think of the words that start with D-I-V. You got divorce, divinity, um, divide, diversity. They all mean the same thing. To separate, to bring apart. This notion that people are speaking in the modern world of saying that we come together in diversity, that is an, that's not just impossible grammatically. It's impossible in reality. As you can tell with identity politics, it keeps fracturing and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It keeps dividing because that is what diversity promises and that is what diversity grants. It divides. It separates. Some might remember that the name of America is also known as the United States of America. We did the divided states of America. It was called the Civil War. It was unpleasant and lots of people died. Those who are doing the diversity and the identity politics, they're trying to get us right back where we were. So that's what I got to say about that. Now, the other thing I want to point out is, and I did it on the other video, but my videos aren't playing to the end right now. So I'm going to hit this topic one more time in case, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> in case you haven't heard it. And that is this. When the Republicans and the Tea Party were fighting against each other, the Tea Party was fighting against the Republicans who were the rhinos, Republican in name only, who were defecting over to join the left, the Democrats. So that was the big inner party split there was, hey, why do you guys keep bailing out on us and going over and joining the Democrats? So that, that was the intramural fight there. The intramural fight that the Democrats are having right now has nothing in common with that except for the fighting. There is no one in the Democrat Party right now trying to race over and join with the Republicans. That's not where the split is. 
For some reason, when you get to Washington, D.C., the split is never to the right. It's always, always, always to the left. And that's what Nancy Pelosi is finding out. Here she is, this, this San Francisco liberal, you know, way to the left and everything. But it doesn't matter because now you've got Elon, who's from a different country, and now she's migrated over here, and she's even farther left. And you've got Talid who's also farther to the left. you got AOC, who's pretending to be farther to the left, but boy, is she a socialist. She's got dark money while she preaches against dark money. She's flying all over the place instead of using the train. She is a perfect example of a true socialist, because look at it like this. How many skinny socialist, how many skinny communist leaders have you ever seen in your life? They don't exist, because when you're on the top, baby, it's all good. Which is the opposite of the promise of socialism and communism. There is no top. Yes, there is. Stalin was not skinny. Mao was not skinny. Kim is not skinny. AOC? She's brand new. Give her time. Okay, that's all I got to say about that. So, thanks for checking in. Hopefully you got to the end of this video. Hopefully it played to the end of this video. Um, and we will check you again in the future. Have a great day.